Well, hello, writers. Welcome to episode number 156 of How Do You Write? I'm Rachel Heron. So pleased that you're here with me today as I talk to Daniel Wilcox, who is a part of Hawk and Cleaver. He runs the Great Writer Share podcast, which I was on, and he's just one of those people that I fell into delight over when we first met online. So I am so pleased to have him talk here. You will find that he is just a charmer and he knows what he's doing. And he's going to talk about writing fast, which all of us want to do. I tell you what, a little bit of update around here. I have been hitting my word count every day, except for today. Honestly, I ran out of battery power when I was over at uh, the college where I write and I didn't have my charger with me for reasons. And I came home and wouldn't you know, as soon as I came home, there have been 1 million things for me to do. If I'd had my charger, I would have stayed there and gotten my last thousand words, but it's okay. I, am, I might give myself today, I might give myself a little gimme, uh, get back into it tomorrow, or I might catch those words in the afternoon, which I hate to do, but I have been really proud of myself for keeping up with my goals because I, can be a slacker. Not a big slacker, but a slacker enough that it makes me feel bad. And uh, I've (laughs) been having so much fun with this book. Although I was lamenting to a friend that (laughs) I believe I'm a third of the way through it now and the inciting incident just happened. So I've got some timing issues, some things, uh, some major things that are going to need to happen in the revision when I get there. But I just write myself a little post-it about what I think is going to have to happen later. And I go on as if it's always happened. I needed to get them out of the house uh, this morning. So I gave her a cat that slips out and she has to go get it because she has to go find something outside. And I write, she has a cat named Freddy. He's big and orange. This sounds so familiar to me. I may have had a big orange Freddy cat in a book before. Maybe I need a big orange cat named Freddy. I don't know. Um, but that's my post-it. And then when I go back in revisions, that's one of my many revision post-its. And Freddy, I will weave him in from the beginning. See? Um, that's how I kind of do it. And I kind of don't worry about it. And I've just been having a very nice time letting it all fall on the page sloppily, badly. I know that I'm writing a terrible first draft and that makes me feel so much better to know that. What else has been going on? Oh, classes wrapped up. Uh, My memoir class finished and uh, that was really nice. It was an in-person class at Stanford and I have to say might have been my best class ever in terms of the most delightful people, usually to be honest, I get the most delightful people plus one challenge. And even my challenges are pretty darn small. And I had no challenges in this class. They were just all lovely and good writers and compassionate and supportive and eager. And no one dropped out. That's one of the things I love about this memoir class. Uh, One person had to stop coming because she was moving, but everybody else just kept coming. And also my 90 days to done wrapped up. So today is Thursday, December 12th. It was the first day in nine, nine months that I haven't met with a group of people at noon. I did 90 days to done, followed quickly by 90 days to revision, and then followed by another 90 days to done. And I'm taking a few weeks off as I try to recalibrate and see where it's gonna fit into my life in the beginning of the year, because January is very, very busy. I am going to be in Pittsburgh for a um, teaching at Seton Hill in their MFA program, which I'm really looking forward to. And there is going to be a live in-person thing with me and Sophie Littlefield and Juliet Blackwell. So uh, if you're interested in that, hit me up if you're in that area and wanna come say hello. Also, I'm going to, that's the first week of January and the first week of February, February 1 through 3, I'm going to be at Story Shop Summit in Austin. I'm very much looking forward to seeing Austin. It is a city that Lala and I have been thinking about. Maybe it's a good place to live. Who knows? I um, am looking forward to looking around while I'm there. So if you have any Austin recommendations, let me know. And... Yeah, all else is going well. Let's jump into the interview now. Oh, after I 
thank new patron Anita Ramirez. Thank you very much. Anita, you should have gotten your personalized little video thank you in your email. I like to do that when I can. Uh, but also a big thank you to you and to everyone who supports on the show. You can always check that out at patreon.com slash Rachel. And I hope that wherever you are, you are getting some happy writing done. And if you let yourself slack off a day or a few days that you don't beat yourself up, as I am often want to do, that you just let that go and start again tomorrow. Remembering that tomorrow morning you might not feel like writing either, but do it anyway. I'll be doing it. I'll be writing with you even though I don't want to. Yesterday was a really rough day for me to get to the page and I made myself drive out to the coast and right before I got to eat this crab sandwich, this crab melt that I love to get out at Dewart's in Pescadero. Uh, so that was my reward. Maybe you should be thinking a lot about rewards for you. It's hard at this time of year. It's hard mentally at this time of year. I have a lot of family and friends who are struggling uh, with some mental health stuff right now. So if that is you, please be gentle with yourself. You are doing writing work right now when you listen to other writers. That counts as part of your job, as does reading. Nothing counts more than writing, of course, but reading and listening and learning, that all counts toward your writing goals and your writing dreams. So um, I hope you enjoy this interview and I wish you happy writing and we'll talk soon. Well, I could not be more pleased today to welcome to the show, Daniel Wilcox. Hello, Daniel. Hello, Rachel. How are you? I'm so glad to see you again. I know. It's been a whole like two or three weeks. It's oh, terrible. It's so long. <laughs> I was on your wonderful The Great Writer Share podcast, which was so mm. fun. Thank you again for having me. And it was one of those reciprocal things. As soon as we hung up, I said, you have to be on my show. So yes. um, now you're here. Let me give you a bit of a bio before we start. Daniel mm -hmm. Wilcox is an international best-selling author and podcaster of dark fiction. He is one quarter of digital story studio Hawk and Cleaver, which is a name I've always really admired, co-producer of iTunes Busting the Other Stories podcast, as well as the host of the Great Writer Share podcast. Residing in the UK, Dan's work explores the catastrophic and the strange. His stories span the genres of horror, post-apocalyptica, post <laughs> apocalyptia, is that what you say? Post-apocalyptia. Uh, post Shaw. Oh, thank Shaw. you. And sci-fi. And his work has seen him co collaborating with some of the biggest names in the independent publishing community. And you and I met through Jay Thorne, who is... We did. One of those biggest names in the independent publishing community. Jay really gets Jay, around. Jay is a god of his own of his own sorts. Now, the best part is he doesn't even realize it. He do he doesn't, but he... He's so when, humble. When you do tell him that, he just rolls his eyes. and Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's great. And oceans just span. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I also, um, so it was, I was saying on your show, how I connected with him immediately and I connected with you immediately. And I really want to hear about your process and how you, because you do all of this stuff and your writing, the most important part. Um, oh, and, yes. and you've got a kid or two, right? Yeah, I've got a, a four, soon to be five year old as well. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So tell us about that. You, this is your full time gig now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I went full time in April this year. So just over the six month mark, but um, yeah. That's right, and since... you're right in the terror point, right? Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of in that middle of, you know, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. It's 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 getting me by, it's, it's everything that I kind of want it to be. Um, and as you always want to do when you're taking your career sort of solo is I, I want to start looking at hitting that next level. So it's now taking those steps and trying to, trying to make that happen. I think yeah. I'm still in that part of learning what my process is, learning what my day looks like, learning how to, to cope with all the ins and outs of, of what it means to be freelance um, and to do this full time. But yeah, I'm, I'm slowly getting there. Six, six months is, is a good milestone marker. So I'm just going to keep pushing. I am at four years and I still am trying to figure those things out. So yeah, that seems longer, to be the, okay. the common consensus. It never seems to get any, any easier, really. Which, which is kind of what I love and why I do this show, because our processes are always, always changing and adapting. And there is no one right way, although we all should think that our way is the right way, the one right way. Absolutely. And I want to hear about your one right way. So tell us about your writing process, when and where and how much and how often. Um, so my day tends to be built up that I will typically on a good day, I'll get up at sort of half five and my first thing i'll do is i'll go out and have sort of a 10 15 minute run just to get my body going get outside get a bit of fresh air wake up the body um i'll come home i'll sort of make myself a coffee while the kettle's boiling i'll have a five ten minute meditation just to try and get my mind into the right state of 
calm of knowing what it is i'm going to do um one thing that i haven't done for the last few months which i'm bringing back in uh, over the next few weeks because it, it works very well at the time is um i'm not a journaler as such but i did buy a sort of notepad that i started writing on my to-do list in the morning yeah. comparing it to what i wanted to do the previous day and sort of transferring over a bit it's very bullet journal in style mm-hmm. um and i think five minutes of sitting down and what i do is i'll write three things that i'm thankful for and then write my sort of to-do list of things that I just want to get done that day. And then out of that list of everything, because I will, I, will, I will literally put everything on there that I can think of. Yeah. But then I'll sort of pick three things where I'm like, all right, this is your priority. Anything else is just bonus. Um, and then I'll, from about six, just gone six, I'll write until seven o'clock when my son gets up. Uh, I'll sort him out, take him to school, do all that kind of dad stuff. And then I'll generally get writing again about half nine, ten o'clock and aim to finish at about midday one o'clock depending mm-hmm. on how much i'm trying to get done that day and what, and what i'm doing um but i mean like i said that's kind of a typical day that i try and aim for but then the afternoon is normally filled with being on my laptop doing podcast stuff uh doing the marketing the evenings usually spent with uh, some sort of super big stuff that i'm trying to plan for next year um and i think i'm absolutely obsessed at the minute with the, with the work i'm doing and i'm loving all the stuff i'm doing and i'm finding or trying to find that balance between home life and work um but at the same time i know that I will need to start taking a bit more of a break soon. And I do tend to hit it quite heavy when it comes into the stuff that I am doing. Um, so yeah, it's finding that balance, but typically, yeah, that'll be my sort of when I'll get my writing done will be those, those hours in the day. Your schedule is, I think maybe the first time I've ever heard basically my exact schedule, um, (laughs) exactly down to and including the bullet journal and the the right, the grad, exactly. We are the right ones. Exactly. (laughs) Um, and the gratitude I think is, uh, something that nobody else has ever brought up, but, Mm. but in our brains, cognitively doing these gratitude lists actually helps us be happier. Literally, mm. it, it raises the happiness level. They've proven. Yeah. So I mean, I bought a um, I bought a diary in I want to say March that was called the the six minute journal, which you can buy on Amazon for about twenty pound. Yeah. And that was the the principles of that is three minutes in the morning, three minutes in the in the evening, and a big part of that was the gratitude. And I you can look back and, and scan because it makes you basically score different parts of your your mental well being against like family, finance, um, health, friendship, all that oh, kind of that's stuff. Great. It, yeah, yeah. On a scale of one to ten and to look at like the first few pages, then sort of about four or five months after and see those numbers go up. Is because quite it a is, nice yeah, it's so hard to do that um, j- just in our brains. There's also another one called the productivity planner, uh, yes. which which you may have seen. And what I took from that one is exactly what you do, where you list everything out, but then you pick the top, you know, one, two or three things that if you did them, your day will be complete that you can. And then everything else is yeah. bonus. And it sounds like you're doing that yeah. too. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah that's I, I yeah, no, I've heartily been approve. Hardcore, yeah, I've been hardcore studying this stuff for probably about, no, I'd say about two, two and a half years or so, particularly um, going back to my old job before I got into the writing was I took a big step very quickly from sort of assistant to coordinator to a manager role. And in trying to handle that, I spent a lot of time trying to refine this process and find the things that would help me get through that. And I've kind of carried a lot of that into my writing. So well done at finding the exact perfect one. So I will say that every once in a while I get up at five. Uh, but that's just nuts. That's just that's, that's <laughs> terrible. All right. What is your biggest challenge when it comes to writing? Oh, myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Quite simple. So, yeah, my I guess my biggest challenge is the expectations of what I think I can get done in a day versus physically what I can get done in a day. And I'm I'm someone that I, I pride myself on quality of work, but at the same time, um, the the way I'm working and the projects I'm working at the minute are quite fast moving projects. So there's a certain level of, okay, this is good enough to be shipped and, and go out. And it's a lot about getting out of my own way and trying not to get bogged down because I'm trying to understand which part of my author journey I'm on. I'm trying to look at what my end goal is and where I want to get to. Um, and I just know that some of the stuff I'm doing at the minute is just the work that needs to be done to get to where I am. And, you know, things like this don't don't just happen overnight. Even, even in becoming full time, I had a, a month period where, in I, th- I think it was probably about month four or so um my head started going okay you've made it which meant that then I slowed down on everything and then things started to catch up and I was like no no you've only just started this journey really you've only just gone full-time because that that was the hard thing was to go from oh, I really want to be a full-time author to I'm now a full-time author that feels like you've hit the big time and you've made the jackpot and obviously it's a it's a monumental um thing in its own right but then 
you suddenly realize okay you now have to find a way to keep this and make it sustainable and then that's the next part of the journey so um yeah i think the biggest challenge really is one overcoming um those obstacles and, and and getting your head into a way in which you're looking at what your end goal is and trying to find the right steps to reach there that are going to work for you but yeah it's normally getting out of my own way and trying not to distract myself or get disheartened because i'll have days where uh, I do I do, do quite big word counts. I'll have days where I'll write sort of five, six thousand words and it won't be wow. the amount of words that I want to get. That's not and then, that's do you want more? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know. Yeah, what's I was hitting them. Um, what's an ideal day of uh, a word count for you on a day? I think ideal I wanna I wanna average about seven or eight. Holy cow. I am not that smart. Like once I hit about three thousand words, I'm out of ideas. I could keep going, but I don't have any more for the rest of the day. And my brain yeah. refuses it just shuts the gate. No more ideas for yeah. you today. You must rest. Yeah, so, no, um Are you dictation I'm... or is this all typing? It's all typing. Jay told me yesterday that he hit seventeen hundred words in twenty two minutes and I wanted to punch him in the beezer. That's so fast. Yeah. yeah, I uh, I think the best that I've done, particularly in the last six months or so, was, and I still don't know how I did it, but I was in a Starbucks. Um, it was the first time I used an accountability partner. I think I was tired. I tend to write well when I'm tired. I do too. Um, yeah, because you're just not thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and within the hour, I looked up and I'd written 3,000 words somehow. And I was oh, like, that's my goal. That's my dream. I was like, imagine if you could do that regularly. You could do that one hour, boom, check out. You have now um, proven, like breaking the four minute mile, you've now proven it can be done. Mm. So <laughs> you can <laughs> no work back to it. Exactly. Yes. Keep me posted yes. on that. What is your biggest <laughs> joy when it comes to writing? Um, I think, I think it's two things. I think, uh, number one is I love the, the flow state of writing and just being in the story and just, it, I mean, you'll know, because obviously you, you, you will have hit this as well. There's no really real way to explain it. It's just that that bliss of just writing and just knowing that the words are pouring out and feeling like it's good, even though it might not, not necessarily be good in hindsight, but that moment where you've just sort of spent 20 minutes, half hour, whatever it is, it's all gone right. You feel fantastic. You can just, you know, hit whatever, close your laptop and just and just call it a day. Oh, it's so good. Um, oh, it's, it's, it's some, and it's, it's so rare that it makes you <laughs> seek, seek it even more yes. because... I love it, but I'm trying to remember the last time I actually had it, and I think it was probably a few weeks ago. Um, but then the other thing is actually hearing from from the readers and sort of real people reaching out to you. And um, I mean, we've got one person I won't name her, but she's an avid fan of everything Hawk and Cleaver does. And uh, the minute you bring something out, she's she's shouting about it. She's messaging. I us, love um, those people. Yeah, and she she's a person that's sort of gone through a lot of um, uh, health issues over the past however many years. She's really really struggling, and she's one of these people that just the the stuff that we do is bringing her relief and i think there's something just so that's amazing just rewarding about that yeah, yeah and that's... to find those people as well because not everyone wants to reach out and to find those people the, to, to have those people find you and for you to appreciate them i think is really mm. really special and important and um to make those people be heard and feel heard is also a gift that you're giving so that's beautiful yeah i love that can you share a craft tip of any sort with us uh i kind of already have so write fast is my, <laughs> yes, is my, is yes. my craft tip it's, a, um, it's brilliant and I, yeah and i'm sure um i know jay speaks about this sometimes and um i'm sure you would have heard of it before but my my whole system at the minute is particularly with first drafting just write the can i swear on here oh yes go right ahead yes write the fucker as fast as you can because there's there's so much that you can do when you have that first draft done and you know what your story is and you know the parts you need to fix, you know what you need to add, everything else. And I think it's very, very easy to get bogged down in, uh, I've forgotten what this name is, so I'm going to Google it. Oh, that's Google. Okay, that's 20 minutes distracted, looking at other things. Oh, okay, back. Okay, let's sort that. Um, and there's nothing really more valuable, um, in my opinion, than actually getting that first draft done. And then knowing what the story is, because it's really difficult to know what your story is until you've finished it. Absolutely. Because it will change yep. from the start to the end. So. That's probably my biggest one is just write fast, move out of your own way and just get it done. What are your specific tips as to writing fast? For me, um, my biggest one is to cut off the distractions and uh, do sprints of any length. Because, mm. And I really like what you said about doing a sprint with an accountability partner opposite mm. you at the table because I am supremely competitive, mostly against myself. <laughs> but if somebody else is there, 
I want to, I, this is terrible to admit, but I want them to overhear the typing of my fingers and wonder if I'm faking, you know, doing fake typing. Yeah. <laughs> I want that. I'm so, stuff. Busy. I'm so fast. I'm so busy. Um, so do you have any other tips like that that you use to get the words out quickly? Yeah. So, I mean, um, I've jumped through loads of different methods. Most of what has worked well for me has um, been time sessions. I, I did go through a period for a good few months, actually, where I just as long as I picked the same days, every the same times every day, my body would start to get into that. But I think that's because I built that habit. Yeah. Um, my my biggest ones that I found keep me productive are in the morning um, when I'm first on my computer. What I will do is open up my calendar app and actually block in the times that I'll be writing and how many words I'm going to get done. And I don't say I how many that. I want to. I'll say I'm going to. Um, so, I mean, I've got like pages and pages on my calendar where it will sort of be a block that will say 2000 words, one and a half thousand words, 800 words, whatever time period, period I'm trying to fill in. That's so and then, simple. And, yeah. and it seems like it would work really well. I yeah. Never because then I'm, because then I'll then look at the calendar and I'll be like, okay, I'll know if I hit 1500, 2000 before that time is up, I reward myself with a little break until the next block happens, or I can try and push a bit further and then build that tally up at the end. Um, but it also means that I've got a visual of how long it will take me to write 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 words in, in those cal- colors. So um, that's one of the big ones. And then, yeah, I've jumped back now into 15-minute timers. And I've just bought a new Fitbit watch, which yeah. I can set a timer on. So every what I'll do is I'll set 15 minutes and then just hammer out words, try not to think about them too much, and then just get them done until it buzzes. I love that. I am so glad that I asked you to expand on that. I'm immediately <laughs> stealing the google calendar thing that is brilliant um yeah i, I don't know how i came up about it but it, i i don't know why i've never heard it you're the first to bring this to me and i and i adore it so thank you very much this is why i copyright. do this show <laughs> copyright <laughs> Daniel copyright <Fox. laughs> <Dibs>. <laughs> write the book on that no one's written that book yet mm. um what is the thing in your life that affects your writing in a surprising way uh i don't know if it surprising so much but reading Mm, Dep- so. in that so i i tend to read quite widely um i like i like my horror a lot mm. but depending on the types of book i'm writing i'll try to find books similar to what i'm trying to achieve because i tend to be very i found um from a very early age that i'm very good at mimicking um which sounds awful i'm not stealing people's content but like no, that's, if how it came- lo- that's how we do it that's how we learn yeah yeah, yeah. And if it came to drawing, I was always really good at sort of copying what other people have done than uh-huh. creating my own stuff. But with writing, I find that whatever book I'm reading, that will just influence 100% what I'm writing that day. So I have to be very careful about what I'm reading yeah. and how that, that leaks into it. Because, I mean, I'm going to struggle to give examples now. But I, the last thing I want is for a book to not sound like it's all come from one unified voice. Yeah. Um, and say I'm writing um, something in the post-apocalyptic zone and then i'm reading something really really horror uh laced then it's a case of i don't want too much horror to go into post-apocalyptic so i then have to specifically find a post-apocalyptic book to bring out to read to to do that and uh, when i started writing um back in 2015 i would deliberately sit and read for five minutes before every writing session like book next to me read it okay just to get my head into the sort of paragraph structures the sentence structures how the tone of voices just to get me started and that was kind of how i built up craft and started looking at voice as well so reading um which seems like the most obvious thing when you're a writer anyway but yeah massive massive impact depending on what i'm reading to what i'm writing that is also a bonus craft tip people so that's (laughs) awesome um speaking of reading what is the best book you've read recently and why did you love it wolfland by jonathan jans what Um, what, uh genre is it it sounds like horror. horror yeah all right yes um I mean, number one, it was a beautiful hardback, which I wasn't expecting. It was a present for my brother. Um, but I asked for a paper. Well, I thought I'd ask for a paperback, but it came as a hardback. But it was beautiful. And it had this sort of red and black cover. It had the wolf on it. And oh. um, I, I think the thing about the book that I love the most was just how, and this is this going to make the horror side of me, because I know that I sound really sweet and soft and everything. You do, but, but all, these, all these sweet people, the <laughs> sweetest people have the darkest writing. Yeah. Yes. Um, and there were just... Uh, the story itself was centered around a group of um, adults who had come back and they were basically doing a school reunion and a couple of days before the actual school reunion they're out in the woods and they get attacked by this zombie uh, this not zombie werewolf figure who comes and attacks a few of them and then it's their story of how they deal with becoming werewolves while hiding it living with everything else 
but just the the descriptions and the the way that it was very poetical in how it actually described a lot of the the actual horror stuff i love it when i love it when people stray away from cliche and can come up with really yeah. original sort of um sense inducing ways to to make you feel the horror and that's that's one of the things i do love from horror is that people who can attack the five senses really get me and that's what i love is that communication of words into feelings yes so just sit there and actually feel physically scared to yes. um actually like taste certain things smell certain things and, and this guy just captured that in some really really beautiful sequences which i've bookmarked i now go back to and just have a look and i'm like yeah this is what he did let's add that to some of my own and yeah yes it was that kind of stuff and it was just a fantastic story as well so so I love what a deliberate reader you are too, as well as getting lost in the story, but you're very deliberate about the use which you can take out of the enjoyment of your reading. So, yeah, which takes fabulous. out the enjoyment of reading. It absolutely <laughs> does. It ruins you as a writer forever and ever. Yes. Um, and as a, as a, not as a writer, as a reader and as a watcher of TV and as a watcher of, yeah. you know, television shows and movies and yeah, all of that. It's really annoying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we are running out of time. What would you like to tell us about right now? Tell us about your last book and where we can find you perhaps. So my latest or any of your book, podcasts. Uh, Yes. Yeah, my uh, my latest book is The Mark of the Damned, and it came out um, on the 25th of October. And it is an occult horror about a guy who essentially just gets a tattoo appear on his arm a month after his father's died. And there may or may not be a connection between the two. Uh, and it kind of goes a lot into the, the depths of the occult, which is um, I it was a book that I absolutely loved writing. And uh, it seems to be doing pretty well. So Good. if you want to it out, then do. Um, and yeah, I've also run the Great Writer Share podcast, which obviously yourself has featured on, um, in which I go into the the tips, the strategies, the mindsets of uh, some of the writers around today from all different walks of life. And uh, the Other Stories podcast is the podcast I do with Hawk and Cleaver, which is a 20 minute horror sci fi thriller fiction, which comes out every Monday absolutely free. And we're approaching four years on that podcast now. Wow. So, a lot of content there for people to, to eat. And where can we find you yourself on online? Uh, find me on my website, www.danielwilcox.com, and that's W-I-L-L-C-O-C-K-S, contrary to every certificate or piece of paper anyone signed with my name on in my life. Um, and uh, you can find me on social at Wilcox Author. I actually got my social security card um, twice mailed to me from the federal government, R-A-C-H-E-L. And I have that oh. extra A-E-L in mind. And I just couldn't get it right. And the, yeah, no. so I, I definitely feel you on that. Yes. Thank you so much for being on the show. And it's so lovely to know you. And let's keep mm. in touch. I want to keep watching you progress and talk to you in a few years when yes. you're like, I've been doing this for years and I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it still feels good. So <laughs> That seems to be the trajectory. So I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's brilliant getting to know you as well. Thank you, Dan. All right. Have a wonderful day and happy writing. Happy writing. Bye. Bye.